Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. E.G. Marshall. Man, it is said, is a pliable animal who gets accustomed to everything. And perhaps this is why man has survived. Pliability, flexibility, adaptability, these are man's great strengths because they have enabled him to adjust to the demands of nature. They are also man's greatest weaknesses because they enable him to adjust to the temptations of the devil. I'll take this call in my study. Uh, meanwhile, my dear, uh, can you keep Mr. Carraway amused? You certainly, darling. I won't be long. Mr. Carraway, I'll tell you what would amuse me more than anything in the world. Yes, Mrs. Masters. Since I have fallen in love with you... Oh, Mrs. Masters, uh, we only met an hour ago. Uh, as I say, I have fallen in love with you. You're a married woman. And it would be amusing if you helped me murder my husband. Our mystery drama, Killer's Helper, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Wager. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Contact, the 12 hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you add it up, it's easier to be a lover than a husband, for the simple reason that it's more difficult to be likable every day than it is to be charming only occasionally. Someone said that if women had to spend as much time with their lovers as they do with their husbands, that's an interesting speculation. However, we have a story to tell. And our play begins, coincidentally, with a scene between a wife and her husband at breakfast. I believe I'll set out some tulip bulbs this afternoon. Mm, Firemark is now at 37. Priscilla brought these from Rotterdam. Didn't we buy Firemark at 16? Priscilla went there on her honeymoon in September. Mm, the international silver screen is holding its gains nicely, too. It was her second honeymoon. Caraway manages that investment group. She also went there on her first honeymoon. And the young fellow's made one right decision after another. And with her first husband. Now, what was his name? He hasn't missed one yet. Albert. No, 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 Alfred. He isn't merely lucky. He was really quite nondescript. Caraway does solid research. I've decided to concentrate on tulips this year. More than just facts and When figures. you consider I've won with roses and dahlias and carnations. He has an instinct. Now if I win best of show with tulips... Like a field for the end I'll... and flow of the market. I'll have no more worlds to conquer. Caraway. He's the man. It's a tough decision. Future of the company's riding on it. Unlike roses, tulips don't reward you. I have to face it. The company's too big, too complex for one man. Yeah. Oh, shall you answer that, Margaret, my dear? My darling, it's exactly ten minutes after eight. You know perfectly well who it is. Life is filled with surprises. Not everyone's life, John. Yes? Thank you. That was Raphael. He's waiting with the car. Good and faithful Raphael. Well, he should be. You pay him enough. He could earn as much elsewhere and some places more. Then why doesn't he leave? Loyalty. You build up a sense of loyalty in your employees and you own them for life. <sighs> Shall you be home for dinner? I have a five o'clock meeting. If it doesn't run late. Oh. Huff, goodbye, darling. Have a good day. But, uh, mm? What is it, dear? Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Coffee? My 
party? Darling, huh? coffee. Oh, oh, yeah, I suppose. Now, what are you thinking about? Oh, nothing, Doreen. But you have such a thoughtful look on your face. That's how I fool the people. Marty, it's going to happen to you today. What is? The thing. The thing? Hmm. This is going to be the day he announces it. Oh, c come on, Doreen. No, no, no. This is the day that Big John, Honest John, John the Great, John, our Lord Master, shall anoint you with his holy oil. Uh, banana oil is more like it. Well, call it what you will. You become heir apparent to the empire. Oh, you are in a classical mood this morning. Oh, you forget. I am privileged to all the conversations. Oh, now, Doreen, it's the most far-fetched thing I ever heard. Miss Doreen Spellman, prim and proper. A prim you're not, and proper you never were. Private secretary to the Wolf of Wall Street. The ferocious John Jacob call me J.J. Masters himself. <laughs> What's bothering you this morning, Doreen, darling? The moment of truth. I wish I knew the reason for this absolutely weird mood you're in. Did you make a play for me because of my looks, which are about, oh, average? My charm, which has never really registered shockwaves. Is this Doreen? Or is it all because I am the handmaiden to the high priest himself and can keep you informed concerning all the rituals? Wow. And this morning, you will be crowned. You will be named heir apparent. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Why would J.J. raise me to the rank of top management? He's convinced you're a genius. On the basis of what? What, what do I know about finance? Well, you know when to buy stocks that are going up? When to sell stocks that are going down? What else do you have to know? What else is this business all about, anyway? What makes you think J.J. would choose me? Well, you're the fair-haired boy. You have a phenomenal record. But it's all guesswork. Of course. And the trick is to guess right. Ah, oh, Marty. What'll happen to you and me? What do you mean, what'll happen? Well, as long as you're just one of the junior execs and I'm somebody's secretary, it's okay for us to have our little affair, as long as we're discreet about it. But from now on, socially, you'll be in the penthouse, whereas I'll still be in the basement. So, what's going to happen to us? Look, whatever happens to me, I, well, I mean, promotion or not, you and I'll go the same as ever. The same? Absolutely. Well, that means uh, we won't be getting married. If it means that much to you, we could get married if you like. If I like. Doreen, I must say you are certainly having a very peculiar morning. I better hurry. I'll be late. Well, why can't we take the same bus downtown? You know we shouldn't be seen together. Don't forget to switch off the coffee. Goodbye, Marty. Wait, I don't like the way that sounded, that goodbye. I... I don't think we're going to see each other anymore. Oh, Doreen. I mean, I took this job as a joke only to prove to myself I could make a go of something stuffy and respectable, and now, now it's got you all on edge. Look, I am going in there this morning and tell old J.J. I quit. Oh, sure. <laughs> Mr. Master's office? Hi, baby. Is he free? Oh, he is right now. I'm coming out. What for? Well, you know what for? We discussed it at breakfast, didn't we? Marty, be careful how you talk about having breakfast. You can never tell who might be listening in. Uh, we've met by accident in a coffee shop. Nobody has to know we have breakfast every morning in our own. Marty. The old voice for you say? Yes. Okay, here I come. You what? I resign. Sit down. You've got guts, I'll say that. I don't think it takes any particular guts. Fantastic timing. How did you know? How did I know what? Uh, Marty, subtlety is okay to a point, but not where it wastes valuable time. Now, let me just sketch this out. You know your value and worth around here, and you found out you were up for number two spot in the outfit. I went out on a limb for you to the board of directors. How embarrassing for me if it turns out I can't deliver you. Thank you, Mr. Masters, but I am not interested. You're not interested in what? In the job. Now, look, you mustn't do this to me, Martin Edward Carraway. It's a fantastic pose, but I'm wise to it. 
To many of our customers, it's worth its weight in gold. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, this cool, calm, almost, but not quite, supercilious, amused manner of yours. But don't pull it on me. I don't know why you insist on... Don't pull... try to be the Renaissance man with me. Don't palm off this I-don't-care-about-money routine in my presence. You'd sell your soul for a buck. Now, look, you have no right oh, to... shut up. If it's any consolation, I'd sell mine for 50 cents. One thing about us soul sellers, it takes one to know one. And I spotted you the minute you went to work here. Starting today, your salary is 52000 a year. $1,000 for each week in the year. Now, close your mouth. You'll catch every fly on Wall Street. But I... I That's just I, window dressing so you can pay some income taxes. You have an unlimited, unquestioned expense account. And the lawyers and accountants are figuring out the best way to set up bonus, stock, and profit-sharing plans. But within three years, you'll have a net worth of five million bucks. All right, now turn me down. Now say no. Now say you don't want the job. I thought so. Uh, sorry, right, though. I don't know what to say. No gratitude, no humility. They don't become you at all. Arrogance. That's what we're paying for. But I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do. You have that gift for finance. But I, I never studied. I... You're a natural. And you've got a lot to learn about the way our company works. Do you have any plans for the evening? Well, as a matter of fact, I... You don't? Oh, that's fine. We'll have some dinner sent in and... Yes? Mr. Masters? Yes? What is it, Miss Bellman? Your daily list of reminders. Oh, of course. What did I forget today? It's your wife's birthday. Oh, damn it. I had the jeweler send this brooch here for your approval. Fine, fine, fine. Have it wrapped. It cost $17,000. That's cheap enough. The diamonds are absolutely magnificent. I told Mrs. Masters to expect you home for dinner early. Now, Miss Spellman, you shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, sir. I have a very important meeting scheduled Your with... instructions to me have always been, see to it that I always go home for my wife's birthday. Do you wish to change that? No. You're right. You're always right. Anything else? No, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, place Mr. Carraway's name on the confidential distribution list. He's been promoted. Congratulations, Mr. Carraway. Thank you, Miss Spellman. Well, that'll be all, Miss Spellman. That's the kind of secretary to have. An iceberg keeps a man's mind on his work. Yes, sir. Can you imagine trying to make love to that? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's part of your style. Nothing's too far-fetched for you. Saved my life. How? Oh. Come home to dinner with me tonight. Mr. Masters, it's your wife's birthday. Wouldn't you want to be with her alone? Oh, no. No, never. She's even colder than the glacial Miss Spellman. We have a fantastic cook, and we can sit around comfortably, and I can score points for being a dutiful husband. I'll be a good fellow, Marty. Help me out. <laughs> This has been a splendid dinner, Mrs. Masters. I tell you what, Marty. Spend the night. Oh, I, I couldn't impose on you. Oh, no nonsense. We have more rooms in this place than we could ever know what to do with. Besides, in the morning, Margaret can show you her gardens. Well, uh... Hey, excuse me. Yes? Who? Well, tell him I... Uh, no, no, uh, might as well settle it now. I'll take it in the library. I'm sorry, uh, Driscoll's on the phone about those Chicago bonds. He'll bend my ear for at least an hour. There's no point in boring you folks with it. I'll cut it as short as I can. Well, uh, may I pour you some more brandy, Mrs. Masters? Another cup of coffee, perhaps? Uh, Mrs. Masters, your, uh, your husband tells me you're quite uh, an avid gardener. Mr. Carraway. Yes. Marcy. What is it, Mrs. Masters? Put your arms around me. I beg your pardon? Hold me close. 
Excuse me? And kiss me. Mrs. Masters. Make love to me. Dinner is over at the master's home. And what is this? The dessert? What can it be? Could it be a trap? Could that phone call have been a device to get Mr. Masters out of the room so that, uh, so that what? Or is our Marty Carraway one of those dynamic lovers who knows how to arouse the passions of prim and proper women? Act two is almost upon us. It was said of Napoleon's army that every soldier carried a field marshal's baton in his knapsack. This, of course, because the lightning could strike for anyone at any time. In a like manner, we have those hot and eager young men in all professions today who are always ready to open the door at opportunity's faintest knock. This morning, Marty Carraway was a junior executive in a Wall Street brokerage house. This afternoon, he was raised to the dizzy heights of top management. And this evening, is he being offered one of the fringe benefits of the job? Make love to me, Marty. Yeah, but Mrs. Max, Kiss just... me. Now, come Kiss on. me or I'll scream. Oh, no, please don't. I'll say you attacked me. Oh, I, and I... there goes your job. And there goes your world. Kiss me. <sighs> Is that so bad? Am I so hard to take? I'm ten years younger than John Masters and, and only five years older than you. Kiss me again. But, uh, Mrs. Masters... Oh, you can't call me Mrs. Masters anymore. My name is Margaret. Margaret? No, no, don't call me Margaret either. I, I hate it. It's so formal. Old maid school teachers, spinster librarians, lonely, unloved, defeated women are always called Margaret. I wouldn't say that. Peggy. No one has ever called me Peggy. Call me Peggy, but first kiss me. But your husband might walk in at any minute. Oh, no. He's talking to Driscoll. He's good for hours. Mrs. Masters, I'm... <laughs> Peggy, what do you want? Can't you tell? I want you. Me? Why? You're the kind of engaging scoundrel women like me crave. Mrs. Matt... Peggy, you have me all wrong. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not the little half-mad fool my husband thinks. Putter about with your flowers, dear. That's it. Dig in the garden and be happy. Peggy, I'm not going to get in the middle of a quarrel between you and John Masters. Oh, but you're there now. And you shall help me resolve it. But I... Now, why interrupt? You really have nothing to say. So then, I've been watching you, Martin Carraway, a young man on the make in John's office. And you made a brilliant move. You're having an affair with Doreen Spellman. And this makes you privy to everything that goes on. That's not what... You're the new type of robber baron. You know who they were, don't you? The men who exploited the opportunities of this country. A hard, ruthless bunch. Look, I think we should straighten something out. What do you think you are doing? Those men, whatever you want to say about them, were at least honest with themselves. They knew what they were, but you? And so many like you today? Mrs. Masters, I find this intolerable, and I'll leave. Where are the wild horses? What wild horses? The wild horses, which, even if they were here, that couldn't drag you away. You young men of today. You're hypocrites. Pious hypocrites. You try to find a noble purpose to disguise your basically crooked aims. But where are you taking me, Peggy? I love you. How can you? How? You excite me. The idea of you excites me. I find you a fascinating man. And I want to marry you. You are married. Yes, but it would be pointless for me to get a divorce. Do you know why? Because I have no money of my own. Therefore, the best way would be for... for me to become a widow. But you couldn't become a widow. Uh... Unless John were dead. Yes. John is only 50. And in the best of health. 
I'll have no part of it. Do you like your new job? You know, I have wealth beyond your wildest dreams. That is, you stand in line to get it. There can be a price that's too high to pay. <laughs> you say that with such a straight face and in such a sincere tone. You're worth everything the company will pay you. There's no limit to how high you can go. And that is why you shall help me kill my husband. There is no way you can convince me oh, to... Oh, of course there is. Pick up the phone. Your husband is on that extension in the library. Yes, talking to Mr. Driscoll. About the Chicago bonds. No, about you. Wouldn't you like to hear what he's saying? He's having second thoughts. What? Well, it's natural. It's normal. We raise a man to power, and immediately we begin to fear him. You've seen it. John is starting to regret. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> of course not. It's human nature. Pick up the phone. Easily, quietly. And listen. Maybe I was hasty, Driscoll. He's a fireball. He could ease me out. And that's what Powell said. I wanted your opinion. Now, he's a good man, but there are other good men. We'll just have to ease him out. Hang up. Well? I can't believe it. Oh, you can believe it. Actually, the minute you went to work for the company, you were after his job. No, that's, that's not true. Of course it is. And it's in our best tradition. Now, let's see. Let's see what happens. We get rid of John. I inherit everything, his money, the business, the works. We get married, you and I. And you head the company. And we live happily ever after. Mrs. Masters... My name is Peggy. No. To me, you're Mrs. Masters. Am I to assume... Yes, I'll have no part of murder. Well, not tonight, anyway. Well, we'll give it a while. Let it soak and stew. You know that the great new job is now a thing of the past. You're on your way out. I don't believe you. Well, what have I to do with it? You heard him say so. I think in about a week... You'll be ready for me. And therefore, the company will hold the securities in escrow. For further instructions, call me personally. That's right, Miss Bellman. Sign my name to it. Copies to Driscoll, Powell, Harding, Schechter, and Murphy. And Caraway. Caraway? Uh, why Caraway? Well, just the other day, you told me to place his name on the list for confidential distribution. Did I? Oh, well, I don't know what I could have been thinking of. If you do have his name on the list, remove it. But what happened, Marty? What happened? We, uh, we had a falling out. What do you mean? Well, I guess we couldn't see eye to eye. What are you talking about? Uh, you know, I wish you wouldn't make French fried potatoes. Oh, Marty, I have to lose weight. What happened? I don't approve of his business methods. We faced each other on an issue. I guess I... I took a stand that'll cost me the job. But I thought you wanted that job more than anything. No, you thought I wanted it. You had me pegged as a hustler. I never use that word. Opportunist, more respectable. But I'm not. I have ideals. Oh, Marty. Marty. Oh, I think I love you. Now I think I can be free to paint, to write, to be my own man. No, no. To be my own man. Oh, I'm so proud of you. So proud. Oh, who can that be? I'll get it. Good evening, uh, you, Mr. Martin Carraway. Yes. Well, perhaps I should have called for an appointment, but that's not my style. Ring the bell, raise hell, that's me. <laughs> and, uh, who are you? Joan Evergreen. A financial writer. Well, I consider myself a journalist. Well, may I come in? Thank you. Ah, lovely place you have here. And this uh, is Mrs. Carraway. Miss Spellman. Miss Doreen Spellman. Miss Evergreen. Oh, I say, well, how do you do? Uh, Mr. Carraway, we got a routine news release that you'd been appointed a vice president and member of the executive committee at J.J. Masters. Yes, but I don't think I... You I'm... don't think the public will be interested, right? That's where you're wrong. You're up and coming. I hardly think so, Miss uh, Evergreen. Oh, and modest. 
I've spoken to some clients of J.J. Masters, people who seem to know the score. They think you're a genius. I uh, wouldn't agree. Come now, you have some very sound economic theories. Now, you're going to be in a visible position. You may attract political attention. <laughs> well, I was never interested in... Consider Secretary of the Treasury. Secretary of the Treasury? Things move quickly. A talented, effective secretary is also handsome, photogenic. I, uh, I may be leaving J.J. Masters. Sure, I've seen men like you come and go. Ambitious men, driven men. It's written all over your faces. And you see it on mine. Oh, it's etched sharp and clear. Sorry to disappoint you, Miss... Evergreen. Evergreen, but I have no ambition. Other than to be left alone. Mind if I join you? What are you doing here, Mrs. Masters? Peggy. I might ask you, what are you doing eating lunch in a dump like this? <laughs> it's quiet. I can think. About what? How you're being eased out? I told you it would happen. It may not. I met a very powerful lady. Oh, who? Financial columnist Joan Evergreen. She'll write about me. Only if you're still a VP at Masters. And that won't last long. How do you know? I spoke to her. I tipped her off about you. And you know what she said after she'd seen you? You're a man to watch. As long as you're visible. You know Joan Evergreen? Oh, I know a great many people. I sent her to see you. Why? To remind you of the future you could have. With me. I want no part of murder. Oh, now, don't say no part. Say a small part. Oh, how can there be a small part? I shall ask John to bring you home tonight for dinner. He'll do it to please me. In this package that I want you to take is a 32 caliber revolver. Oh, no. Well, why, why do you talk so quickly? It's so simple. I've arranged for all the servants to be off. We're having a potluck supper. Sometime during the evening, a burglar is going to enter the house and kill my husband. No. You just said that. He will struggle with my husband and kill him. No. You're really quite monotonous. Now, look, no devious, complex plans where things can go wrong. Just bang, bang, bury the gun. It was a burglar, and the deed is done. I won't do it. I've already spoken to John. He's driving you home. We'll be at the table. When I say, now, you shoot him. Hey, Margaret, I'd forgotten what a good cook you were. <laughs> oh, we didn't always have servants. Oh, yeah. Those were the good old days. Huh? I don't think so. It's no fun to be poor and do without. Don't you agree, Mr. Carraway? Oh, he's a young fellow. If he plays his cards right, he can be president of the United States one day. Sure. That's why this is such a great country. It can happen to anyone. Not anyone. Only to someone special. Someone who has created a reputation for something. In Martin's case, finance. Someone attractive, personable, with the right connections. Sufficient backing. Hey, Marty, she's practically got you elected. Now, Marty. Now. Now what? I said now, Marty. Do it now. Do what now? What's he supposed to now do now? Now or never, Marty. Now or say goodbye to it all forever. Uh, Marty, do you know what you're Don't talking about? Don't lose your nerve. Hey. What is this? What's that gun for? Show him, Marty. Well, you, you're crazy. You don't want to kill me. Now, Marty, now. Kill him. Margaret, you're my don't wife. Don't even think about it. Just point it at him and squeeze. Squeeze that trigger. But you can't. Uh, Marty, don't. Oh, uh. Marty. Again, Marty. Shoot him again. This woman becomes increasingly more demanding. She begins by saying, make love to me. And she has just advanced to the point where she says, kill my husband. Where can she go from here? Well, we're going to have a brief intermission and... 
But then it's back for Act Three. We're in the palatial home of John J. Masters, head of the internationally famous brokerage house. We're in the living room, and we're looking at the following tableau. On the floor, dead, with two bullets in him, is John J. Masters himself. Standing over his body with a revolver in his trembling hand and a greenish tinge to his face is Martin Carraway. Standing next to Martin Carraway is the very recently created widow, Mrs. Margaret Masters. Very good. Okay. Very good. Oh, you did very well. It's splendid. Perfect. She's, she's, she's dead. D dead. Well, of course. That was the idea of the whole thing, right? Now, give me the revolver and I'll say that it's never found. What are, what are we going to do? We're going to call the police. Will they be believe us? Well, why shouldn't they believe us? Burglars do break into houses and kill people, don't they? Now, pick up the telephone and remember your story. Dial the operator. Ask for the police. Th there's really nothing to it. You you're calling from Mr. Masters' home. Ah, uh, operator, I'm... I'm calling from the home of John J. Masters. There's been a murder. Mr. Masters has been mur murdered. By a burglar. By a burglar. Thank you. Please... Oh, that's very good. Oh, there's nothing to this. Kiss me. No. Why not? Oh. Well, we, we can't get married for a while. You understand why, but we must see each other. Of course, here would cause a scandal. Or rent a quiet little out-of-the-way place. Are you listening? Yes, I... I, I killed him. Now, you don't have to go through all that for me. What are we going to do now? We tell the simple story. We were at the table. A burglar broke in. John grappled with him. The burglar killed him and escaped. That's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing to get tripped up in. Sweet and simple. Now, about us. You went a nice little place and live there. Oh, and um, get rid of Miss Spellman. But she... She what? She, uh, she's a good secretary. She was John's secretary. You must choose your own. Uh, be generous, though. Give her a year's pay. Two years. And, and just don't get rid of her in the office. The other thing, too. What other thing? I don't intend to share you with anyone. Do it, and at once. As soon as we finish with the police. Marty? Marty, are you all right? Yes. It was on the news. J.J. murdered by a burglar. I, are you all right? I'm fine. Oh, I'm so happy. The only way to say this is to say it. We're through. What? Are you tired of me, Marty? For whatever reason. We're finished. At the office, too? You'll get a very generous severance arrangement. Oh, sure I will. Well, I can understand your being tired of me as a person, a woman, but why at the office? Because. Oh, that's, that's the way it is. Can I guess? Do as you like. Another woman? Does it matter? Let me guess again. Mrs. Masters. How can you say that? It could be dangerous for you, Marty, if the wrong people found out. Doreen, we're both adults. We know that whatever begins must always end. No speeches, please. Must I leave tonight, or can I stay here till morning? You don't have to leave at all. I'm going. I'll see the rent is paid for the remainder of the lease. Oh, that's three years. You are generous. The burglary. The police believed your story? Why shouldn't they? It's true. Of course. Well, it, it was fun while it lasted. Yes. It was fun. That all it ever was? Yes. Good luck, Marty. The best. What is it, 
Bellows. Uh, Mr. Carraway, uh, Mrs. Masters wants to have a conference with you on her stock options. She on the phone now? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Masters, I'm sorry. There's been an emergency, and Mr. Carraway had to go to the airport. Uh, yes, I'll tell him. Bye. Thank you, Bellows. Incidentally, did uh, you do this work up on the Calgary Land Prospectus? Uh, yes, sir. I hope you don't mind. That's a splendid job. It was due for the printers on Monday, and you were in Washington with the President's Advisory Council, so... Well, some of this is inspired. And I'm getting rather involved politically. It's good to know I've got a man I can count on. Well, thank you, sir. I'm sick of coming here and having dinner. I spoke to the President. It's just like it was with John. Why can't we ever go out? The whole country, the whole country, the world puts pressure on him. I know we won't be able to get married or even be seen together for a long while. How can one man bear that burden? But can't you pay a little more attention to me? And yet, you know... I would like to try that oh, burden. You're just like John Solrum. I could do it. I know how to spend money effectively. You're never aware and of me. I know how to save it. I'm no better off than I was. Listen to that. Midnight. Yes. And we'd better be getting you home. I wonder why I even come here. Oh, darling, you're upset. I never see you. If we get married before at least another year goes by, that... That will create too much suspicion. I know, I know. Now, so don't be silly. When shall I see you again? If you get involved in politics, I'll never see you. It's the duty of every citizen to be involved in the running of his country. Can I see you tomorrow? I'll call you. That means no. The day after? Oh, Margaret. My name is Peggy. I'll see you as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> Just a minute. Hello? What are you doing here? Well, aren't you going to ask me in? Thanks. What do you want? Well, I might want a little civility. A little courtesy. Kindness. But you lost all those traits when they were no longer needed to serve your purpose. Doreen, what is it? I said you could be in trouble if the wrong person found out about you and Mrs. Masters. What are you driving at? Fortunately for you, the right person found out. Me. I don't know what you're talking about. She comes here to visit you. Oh, not as often as she'd like to, perhaps. But she comes here. I've seen her. All right. Let's get to it. How much you want? This is blackmail, isn't it? No. Well, what is it? I've come here to save you. From what? From hell. <laughs> Simple thing, Marty. You committed murder. Oh, go to the police. Confess. Why? Well, what's your life worth this way? Are you serious? Your conscience will kill you in the end. I don't believe that. Conscience never killed anyone. I don't even think about it. Oh, there's something in you, Marty. Something I fell in love with. That's honest and decent. I must ask you to leave, Doreen. I'll give you one week to decide. And then I'll go to the police. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Now, uh, sit down, uh, Bella. I, uh... I know you're very discreet and, uh... And so I want to ask you about a very confidential matter. Yes, sir. I... There's someone who's quite capable of doing me great damage. Yes, sir. And I understand there are people who can eliminate various... Oh, yes, indeed, sir. And would you be able in a very discreet way to ascertain who some of these people might be? Consider it done, Mr. Carraway. Bellows, I, I get to lean on you more and more each day. I, I shall have more information for you tomorrow, sir. Good. Now, what is there I have to know today? 
Well, the Calgary reports must be done in detail. Well, that will call for hours of work. You free this evening? Uh, yes, sir. But you're not. Why? Well, Mrs. Masters phoned and said since it's her birthday, she was expecting you for dinner. Oh, damn it, I forgot. Which is why I took the liberty of purchasing this necklace at the jeweler's. Oh, fellows, you're old friends. Look, uh, save my life. Uh, how's it? Come to dinner with me. But isn't this a rather personal... Look, it'll give me an excuse to break away early. Well, if you're sure it's all right, sir. Excellent dinner, Mrs. Masters. You should see this place by day. Mrs. Masters has the most fantastic garden. Oh, excuse me, let me get that, Peggy. Hello? Oh, Driscoll. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to work on that. Uh, hold on. I can never get Driscoll off in under an hour. Maybe I'd better talk to him in the library. Excuse me. I'll cut it very short. Uh, may I, uh, may I pour you some brandy, Mrs. Masters? Uh, another cup of coffee, perhaps? I understand you're an excellent gardener. I have no luck with plants myself. Well, now, this is an interesting silver piece. I I'd like to collect silver someday. Mr. Bellows. Yes? Kiss me. What? Put your arms around me. I beg your pardon? Hold me close. But, uh... Kiss me. Mrs. Masters. Make love to me. Haven't we been here before? Well, we've been everywhere before. We've seen everything and even done everything. Doesn't the book tell us there's nothing new under the sun? We know it, but we keep hoping tomorrow will be different. Well, maybe I can come back with something different in just a few moments. Can we learn anything from what we have just heard? Yes, of course. Write this down and memorize it. If you ever meet a wealthy lady whose husband neglects her and she asks you to help murder him, do not, I repeat, do not assist her in this enterprise unless you are prepared to be a better husband to her than he was. Our cast included Michael Wager, Joan Lovejoy, Robert Dryden, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.